Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connection Standalone. RAM Connection Standalone is used for the designing and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this particular video, we're going to be focusing on the workflow for assigning a directly welded moment connection to a beam to column joint within RAM connection standalone. We will now turn our attention to our sample model in RAM connection standalone. For this video, I'm going to be focusing on designing a directly welded moment connection to joint number one. Joint number one is a beam column flange joint that has both a shear and a moment reaction imposed upon it. Now within RAM connection standalone, certain connection templates are capable of resisting shear forces, certain connection templates are capable of resisting moment forces, and other connection templates are capable of resisting both shear and moment. The directly welded connection type is a moment connection, meaning that it can handle the moment reaction that's imposed upon this joint. Since this joint has both a moment and a shear reaction, however, it was necessary to go ahead and assign a shear connection to this joint in addition to the moment reaction, in addition to the moment connection, to ensure that I get to a complete design where all of my forces have been resolved. Now, if I take a look in the joint selection area, I'd be able to see the status of the connection design as it stands right now. Right now, I only have one connection assigned to it, which is my shear connection, and this connection is currently passing. I'm now at the point in my design where I'm ready to assign my directly welded moment connection to this particular joint. To do that, I'm gonna to go to the design tab of the ribbon toolbar and click on my assign icon. Now within RAM Connection Standalone, we have two main workflows that you can use to allow RAM Connection to assign a connection template to a currently selected joint. The first option is a basic connection workflow. This means that RAM Connection will search through a predefined connection database until it finds a connection that works well for the joint, considering both the geometry and the loading that's assigned to it. The next workflow we have available is the Smart Connection Workflow, where you're going to allow RAM Connection to determine all of the main design parameters in the connection, such as your connector size, your number of bolts, or size of weld. Now, certain connection templates are available in just one of these different options. And for the directly welded connection, it's actually only available in the Smart Connection Workflow. So I'm going to access my Smart Connection Workflow, and I'm looking for the acronym DW, meaning Smart Directly Welded Connection. This is basically a full penetration weld that will be used to connect the top and bottom flange of my beam member to my support column. Once the connection design is complete, I will go ahead and click on the Close button. Now, if I take a look in the joint selection area, I would see that my interaction ratio and status of my connection design have been updated. This area will indicate whichever connection is controlling in your particular joint that you have selected. And this is especially true if you have more than one connection assigned to the same joint. Now to ensure that I am showing the controlling interaction ratio, I can go to the Home tab of the Ribbon Toolbar and I can see very clearly that my critical load condition icon is selected, which means that this is the controlling interaction ratio. Now, if I were to take a look in this joint selection area, I'd see that my moment connection has pushed this from a passing connection design to a failing connection design. So I need to take a closer look at this connection. To do that, I can go to the Design tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and click on the Edit icon. Now, at this point, we do have two connection templates assigned to this joint. So I can edit the shear connection and the moment connection individually. I'm gonna go ahead and access my moment connection where again, I'd be able to see that full penetration weld that has been assigned. Now by default, when we select a directly welded connection type, 
the joint design will occur with an unreinforced connection design. But we do have the option to add some stiffeners to this to get to a passing connection design. So I can add some transverse stiffeners or some column web panel zone stiffeners if I wanted to kind of get this to a passing connection design. Now once I'm within the connection pad, I can take a look at all of my input data. I can take a look at the stiffener area and consider adding stiffeners. And I can also review the results and the DXF plan. I'm going to go ahead and start with the results for this particular joint since it is currently failing. And let me go ahead and scroll on down to the design check area. Here I can see that the bottom local flange bending and local web yielding have pushed this over to a failing connection design. Now if I'd like some additional information while in the connection pad, I can click on the view formulas icon where I'd be able to see all the formulas and variables that were used to arrive at these results. Let's go ahead and close out of the report at this point. Now that I've reviewed the results, I'm going to consider what I can do to get from a failing connection design to a passing connection design. And I have two main options available to me. The first option is to consider changing my joint geometry. Perhaps I could increase my column size to get to a passing connection design with an unreinforced layout. The other option is to add uh, some type of stiffeners to this particular joint to get to a passing connection design. Now, if I wanted to change my column size, what I really should do is exit out of the connection pad, change my joint data in the main application, and then come back here and see if that pushed me to a passing connection design. I'm going to assume that I am not able to increase my column size, and instead I'm going to try adding some stiffeners. So I'm going to come down to the stiffeners area, and I have two different options. I can add transverse stiffeners, so this is what that would look like. Or I can also add column web panel zone stiffeners. So I can add a doubler plate, or I can add some type of diagonal stiffener. I'm going to try the transverse stiffeners. So I'm going to add them on both sides. And immediately what I see is that that pushed my interaction ratio down below less than 1.0. But I am getting a warning since this is in yellow. I know that. Now, before I go any further, let me take a look at these stiffeners and detail them the way I would prefer. So I'm going to add full depth stiffeners. And if I took a look here, I'd see that my stiffeners are actually slightly wider than my column flange. So I'm going to pull those back a little bit. In addition to that, I'm going to take a look at this weld size and I'm going to bump this up to 4 16 or basically a quarter inch weld. Now, by making those changes, I can see that my interaction ratio is less than 1.0, and it is in green, meaning I have not received any warnings or errors on this connection design. Now, at this point, I'm happy with the changes I've made, so I'm going to go ahead and save this to the connection pad, which basically means that these will be retained once I leave the connection pad. Now, before I leave this area, let me take a look at the DXF view, where I'd be able to see all of the detailing of this moment connection in this view. I can customize the font size and the layers, and I can also export this as a DXF. Now at this point, this concludes my process for assigning a directly welded full penetration weld to resist a moment reaction in a beam to column joint. And then again, you can see my joint selection area has been updated to reveal the new status of this combined connection design. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.